Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, co-founder at RackN, here with part two of a three-part video showing you how to do uh, digital rebar provision, so Pixie provisioning on packet infrastructure. So uh, you can do this without any servers at all. In the first video, we showed you how to use digital rebar provision to, uh, to install it on a packet server, and then how to boot from there into a uh, sledgehammer instance running with basically watching their console boot and using their console. Uh, this is all enabled in Packet and it's a feature that Packet's enabled with their bare metal servers to add your own Pixie infrastructure. So I'm going to step, kick back into where I, where I left off, which was right here. We've, we have a server um, that we're trying to access because it's on the network, but my keys haven't been added to it. Uh, I can come into this is actually the server running on the network, but through Packet's console, which is, is not as useful for me, because uh, I don't want a serial console into my servers, except in emergency cases. So what I really want to be able to do is get my key, so I can look at my public key. You're welcome to add it to all of your servers. Uh, that would be great. So my public key is here. And what I really would like to do is have DRP use this public key uh, in all of my installs. Uh, and you can do it based on profiles, you can do it based on uh, global attributes, things like that. In this case, we're going to go ahead um, and I will edit. We have a profile. Um, we have, whoops, not that. Uh, we have several profiles uh, that you can take advantage of out of the box, um, like changing your um, local repos, your OS installations, things like that. In this case, root access is the one we're playing with. And instead of making a profile called root, root access and assigning machines to that profile, so this is giving people root access, I'm going to be a little more sketchy and uh, I'm going to add this to global. So what I'm going to do is BAL. I'm going to have all servers provisioned using my key because uh, that's, you know, that's what my, my global goal is. And I'm going to take out Greg's key here and I'm going to add in my key, so Rob's key in here. And you'll notice um, that I have some choices. I could actually you know, add uh, force commands with, pa with password, things like that. These are just post provisioning steps that are enabled in the system. So I'm going to save that. That in itself doesn't do anything. I have to tell the provisioner to use it which is also very straightforward. So I can use the DRP CLI, which is just one level up. Um, and I want to tell it that I have a uh, profile that I want to update called root, sorry, called global. And I'm going to pass in the YAML file I just made, or I just modified. So root access YAML looks pretty good. Uh, except I should have said profiles, not profile. And in this case now, I've changed that profile to use my key uh, when before it was putting in, uh, I guess, Greg's key that was before. So sorry, Greg, your attempt at global domination is curtailed in favor of me, at least in this instance. So next, next step here is I'm, I'm pretty much done. If I jump back over to digital rebar provision, what you'll see is uh, the infrastructure here is doesn't look changed at all. We're adding profiles and things that you, you'll be able to see these in the UX uh, probably by the time you're looking at, the, at this demo. Um, the machine, I hadn't shown this in the earlier video, the machine that I just booted went through to the discovery process, which meant it registered. So right now I have this machine on this IP address that's being told to boot Sledgehammer. If I come over to Packet, and choose to reboot that machine. So here's that same machine. I can reboot it. So it's going to go through the reboot process over here. And what we'll actually see is it in the console, we see that it was told to shut down. It's going to reboot, reinstall. And the only difference between the last time we did that and this time is now it's going to include my SSH key. Um, we actually have a script uh, that we're looking to integrate from Packet that brings in your SSH keys from Packet in addition. So um, digital rebar provision is being adapted to have staged tasks and some really exciting new, new features. Um, and those will allow you to then take Packet specific actions like adding your own SSH keys. So this is going to go through this process. 
uh, very quickly. I want to go in the background and, and boot another machine. So I have two working. So this will remind you of the process that I went through. So if I come back over here, I'm going to grab my HTTP default Pixie process. I'm going to add another server. So I'm going to call this my Pixie 2 very creative naming. Custom iPixie, give it my URL, same data center. Remember to uh, make Pixie persistent so I can keep redeploying and jump straight in here. What will happen in this case is this system is not known to pack it. It's not, sorry, it's, it's known to pack it. It's not known to digital rebar provision. So when I look at the system here, you'll see it actually add another machine once this uh, system is completed. Okay. So now we're, we're in a place, this has now rebooted the whole system. I can do what I had done before, rebar one. Uh, so this is my pixie one and I can touch foo.bar just to show them here. This is all very handy, but this isn't really what I want. What I want to be able to do is come over here and I want to SSH back into this box. So in this case, remember we just reinstalled the whole thing. So it has a whole new identity. I have to delete the key. Now I, when I try to log in, it comes in. Now I can log in because my key's been added. And if I look at that, you'll see here's foobar, the file I just added. So now I have full access and control to the box in a normal boot provision cycle. When I do this for the sec for the new machine, so let me get out of this. I don't need to be here. Uh, let's see, tilde period exits me out of their control system. If I jump over to my new packet box, once again, let me figure out its UID before it's finished provisioning. So I can watch this. So in this case, here's my server's UID. Thank you. Uh, all right. So with that UID, now I have access to the system and you can see it's boot provisioning. Sledgehammer also, um, it's almost done at this point. And so we'll be able to go in and uh, log in to Sledgehammer uh, as both. So this is an in-memory system. It hasn't done any install. It's handy from a demo perspective and a trial perspective because it's fast. So if you want to actually just make this work, this is your super fast way to do it. Re rebar one, uh, touch bar.foo. And when I look at those things, here's bar.foo. So once again, I don't want to be in this window doing real work. I want to be in SSH. So here, uh, also, if I come into my machines list, you'll see I now have two machines and here's Pixie one and Pixie two both of them in Sledgehammer. So I'm going to copy that key, SSH root, at this key. And because it was in my global profile, I immediately have access. So my key has now been persisted into that server. Uh, pretty straightforward, but a really important step in actually building real infrastructure is being able to inject your SSH keys uh, as part of that. Uh, so next step for us would be to install a real operating system uh, we have a long list of assets on that, and that is the subject of our next video where we will go through the process of installing uh, an operating system and working through that. So check that out uh, for the next step in this process. Thank you. Hope this was helpful. This was Rob Hirschfeld, uh, co-founder of RackN.